Ja, kæft, for kan jeg bare ikke se en fucking skid. Okay, så... So right now we are driving on the highway, because we are going to uh, Monk's place. Uh, tomorrow is the first day of Zero meeting this year. Uh, almost 50 freestylers from 10 different countries have uh, registered, which we are pretty satisfied with. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a pretty good meeting this year, um, but there's a lot of preparations going on still. So for now, we are, we're going to Monk's place uh, where we'll spend the night and uh, yeah, do the last couple of things before tomorrow. So we meet motherfuckers. My name is Simon. I'm uh, the vice chairman of uh, DFFC, the Danish Football Freestyle Community, and um, I'm one of the main organizers here at the Zero meeting. Well, Surumi started back in 2011, um, back in the old city of Soro. Having Surumi meet um, originally was a way for us to keep us self-motivated, uh, have a place to train uh, together and uh, invite people from, uh, from elsewhere as well. That's the first time that the, like the main core of Danish freestylers came together and actually started talking about having a structure and organization around uh, freestyle football in Denmark. Um, so you could actually say that DFFC as a community and an official organization is kind of born out of Zorway Meet. Let me put it like this, without Monk there's no Zorway Meet and it's been like that ever since the beginning. Uh, he is the, the soul of the meet. Vi startede Zorway fordi jeg havde en god kontakt og jeg kommer derfra. Uh, det var min lokale klub, uh, hvor vi igennem dem uh, lånte en halv. Uh, we went there and we trained all day, all night, had pizza in a sweaty hall and woke up with pain in our backs. But we were happy um, and we did that for a full weekend straight and we're just like, okay, this needs to be done again next year because it, it was just a motivation boost. As I mentioned back in 11, uh, we were around 10 people. Maybe we doubled that in 12, uh, around 30 and 13. And then the years after that, it just exploded. And I think in 2015, we were around 70, 80 people. Uh, and in 2016, around 80, 90. Uh, it was insane. Like, and we were not prepared for it at all. It was just me and Monk uh, running around fixing broken toilets uh, for a full weekend straight, and uh, it was it was tough, but it was really fun, and it, it really put Zero Meat on on the like world map of freestyle football. The feeling and experience of seeing 80 freestylers practicing at the same time in a small hall in Zorway, it just felt so surreal at the time. I, I can't even describe the feeling. I mean, back then, I wasn't that big of a freestyler myself. I was just organizing shit. Uh, and I suddenly had guys like Shumo staying at my place. Um, he had a beer in the kitchen with my dad. And like, watching back on it, it's just like, what the fuck happened? It's four in the morning, so we got the combo, going to sleep. Tomorrow, last day of Sura meet, and then piss off back home. Here we went, you know, 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 
and then it came crashing down in uh, 2017 because of uh, the problems we had with the facilities in Copenhagen. The main reason that we decided to move the meeting from Sorø is uh, we had kind of a falling out with uh, the uh, football club. There was some misunderstandings uh, and some broken agreements uh, on their part. It made sense for us, okay, now these guys, they're not that helpful and, and they kind of see it as an opportunity to earn money and take advantage of us, um, even though we're there, non-profit, just to try and create some, some cool activities. And at the same time, there were so many people joining that we felt, okay, let's try something new. So I got, in eller jeg tænkte, det var heldigt, en kontakt inde i København, hvor de lovede mig en lokation. Da det så begynder at nærme sig, så ryger mit. Han, han trak tiden ud, og jamen, der har styr på det, der er halv, og lige pludselig var der ikke styr på det, der var ikke halv. Så to uger før, vi havde over 90 øh, gæster, havde vi ikke noget sted at være. Og der var der lidt panik. I think like the reputation of the meet uh, took quite a hit because uh, the the hall we had in Copenhagen it wasn't that big like the surroundings and the facilities of the meet uh, didn't meet the expectations from earlier years. Det var der vi skulle shine, det var der vi skulle have fremgang og så fik vi bare en mm, kæmpe mavepuster. Og det vil så sige året efter da vi finder en mega god location i Rødovre hvor der er plads, altså mega meget plads, og der er perfekte omgivelser igen, så er, så er vi mere end halveret, øh, fordi at alle fik et chok for det der, og tænkte, at det kunne vi ikke finde ud af. Ja, og så en cheeseburger. Og stor på frit. Og tre majos til. <laughs> 2019 and forward is um, the latest and most important turning point because that's where we got these facilities. It's already four years ago um, and of course with Corona in the middle of everything it's been, uh, it's been difficult for, for people from overseas and from, from different parts of Europe to travel here but um, from, from where we are now uh, I can only see reason for Surami to keep growing. I've been freestyling for 14 years, that's 50% of my life. Uh, and I don't know what my life would look like without freestyle football. Seriously, it's, 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 I can't even imagine. Facilities of the meet is very much like back in the old glory days, 
but better. It's possible for us to actually host up until 800 people. <laughs> I think actually there's only one person left that's been here every single year uh, besides me and Monk and that's PWG. Uh, there's something about this guy's passion for freestyle football. It's you know, it's he it's the same. He gets the shout out every year at Super Bowl because he has been there since the very beginning. It's the same thing with Raw Meat. Like we we just we, we couldn't get rid of this guy if we wanted to, and we don't want to. We want him to be here on the 20th anniversary as well. Ball important. Just bought this today from Leon. Thank you very much. And you might be wondering, hey. Why does a 31-year-old go to a freestyle meeting like this and sleep in a, in a classroom on an air mattress? That's something that I ask myself every single February as well. But when I see the freestylers, you know, coming together and training together from all over Europe, it's worth it. But I'm going to have back pains on Sunday, but it's definitely worth it. All right, stuff has changed since the first one, which was like, I don't know, 10 years ago. Uh, but the vibe's still the same. And the core people, still the same. <laughs> and this, there's a store outside, like always. If there's anything that is like the same as it used to be in the good old days when it comes to freestyle, this is it. <laughs> it might not look like much, but it feels deep inside. I think we have grown into uh, a mindset where we are too focused on competitions and too egotistical about what I, as a freestyler, want to want to like reach. What level we want to reach? Uh, do I want to become world champion? Uh, do I want to become famous or something like that? Here, it's not not about that at all. It's just about hanging out and training.
i øjeblikket er det sådan noget med, at træningen kører for de her 6-7, kl. 6-7 stykker til kl. 2 om natten. Øh, hvilket så også gør, at, at morgenerne de er lidt sløve. Øh, men der er det der, hvor man bare hygger. It's it's just it's much more chilled and and not that serious and and I think that's that's been an important part of freestyle at least for me in many years uh, and the competition side of it um, it's just it's very different from that it, it's it's not necess- it's not bad it's not negative but it's uh, it's it's something else it's something different and I feel like we need to be able to balance it out uh, there needs to be events where people can come and just focus on training getting better meeting new people and uh, creating friendships across country borders that's uh, that's the most important thing in freestyle for me at least Modsat, modsat! It's really special, I, I think. It makes me feel like when I start freestyling, only for, for passion, just chilling, training with the other guys, meeting each other, uh, no competition, no stress, only, only freestyle. Når mig og Simon sidder og er helt slasket hen på tribunen og kigger ud, så er det fedt at se folk gang med træne. Folk hygger sig. Det er det, der ligesom motiverer os at skabe noget, hvor folk trives og øh, synes, det er fedt at være til. Og skabe en tradition også. Jamen, så det er bare, vi vil helst ikke se sporten uddø. Vi vil helst ikke se sporten kun blive et Instagram-post eller TikTok-post. Det er det sociale bagved. Simon har også øh, en stor ære i det. Øh, vi, vi arbejder tæt sammen. Monk and me, uh, we've been a team, uh, both freestyle-wise and organizationally, uh, for yeah, a good part of uh, 11 years now. Monk, he's like the idea man. Like he, he has all the good ideas, he has all the visions, and uh, it's been the same ever since we started. Like. When Lars he started talking about having this meeting in in Sorway, he was already beginning to talk about you know what it could become. This can really be something big, and he was completely right from from the beginning. And 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 that's a general thing about Monk, his his visions of uh, of both freestyle and events. 
He has an ability to see potential um, where most people wouldn't. I, I take all of Lars's ideas and then I like try and put them back down into a box where I can see, okay, what's realistic. But this kind of dynamic between us, uh, I, I think, has been very important uh, for us to, to create these events and, and, uh, and competitions and so on uh, since the very beginning. Um, this, this duo that we have and the way we work together is, uh, is very important. Like, I wouldn't be able to do it without him and uh, I like to believe that he wouldn't be able to do it without me either.